بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear students, this is lecture 9 uh, It's about the consonants of English This is a new uh, section in our book uh, Now we um, should know that uh, sounds in English are either consonants or vowels either consonants or vowels consonants are the sounds produced with obstruction to the air flow which means when we produce any consonant there is a certain kind of um, of obstruction to the air flow by the organs of speech so the organs of speech interfere with the airflow that is going out uh, either through the mouth or through the nose. While in vowels, there is no such obstruction and the airflow goes out freely. This is the basic difference between consonants and vowels. Again, consonants are produced when the airflow is obstacled or obstructed يعاق, at certain point in the vocal tract. While in the production of vowels, there is no obstruction to the airflow and the airflow goes out freely. Now, the airflow in consonants may be obstructed completely or partially. And sometimes the, uh, the obstruction is a slight one, a slight one. We are going to see uh, different kinds of, of obstructions to the airflow. Let's have an example. The sound P which is a consonant sound. The sound P is produced with obstruction, as we said, because it is a consonant. So what kind of obstruction we have here? We have a complete obstruction. What do you mean by complete obstruction? The, uh, the oral cavity and the nasal cavity are both closed completely and the air is trapped, stopped for a short time. That's why this sound is called a stop sound. Why? Because the air is completely, completely stopped. We can try a p okay? You can feel that the air cannot go out. It is completely obstructed. A partial obstruction can be seen in the pronunciation of the sound. S -s -s. In this case, we will have a fricative sound. A free fricative sound. What is a fricative sound? A fricative sound is a sound produced when the organs of speech are, are partially connected. There is partial contact and the air is partially stopped, not completely. So it can go out, but not freely as in vowels. There is a, a, a obstruction that is not complete, which causes friction. So in ihtikak. Okay, so let's ask a question. Why do we normally start with consonants, not vowels? Why in our course we start dealing, describing, learning consonants, not vowels? There are reasons. The first one is that consonants contribute more to making English understood than vowels do. What does this mean? This means that when consonants are missing from a word, it is often hard to guess the word. For example, in this word of four letters, only the vowel is, is, is available and the, uh, the, the consonants are missing. The consonants are missing. So there are maybe thousands of options we can... Uh, um, we can guess here. But with, for example, this word in which the consonants are available but the, the vowel is not found, what do we have? Mm, maybe run, maybe run. Okay. Uh, the, these are possible. So the options here is very much limited compared to the first example. So when the consonants are there, we can guess the, the word. When the consonants are missing, we cannot guess the word easily. Actually, we can, but it's not easy. To have the consonants available and the vowels missing, it is much easier. It is much easier. And don't forget that 
consonants in words are more frequent than vowels. For example, in a syllable, we may have one vowel, but we may have consonants before the vowel and consonants after the vowel. So consonants are more frequent. The second reason is consonants are produced by a definite interference of the speech organs with the airflow. So whenever we have a consonant, when we produce it, there is a definite interference. There is a clear interference or interaction between the speech organs and the airflow. Something that we can see sometimes, something that we can feel sometimes. That's why they are easier to describe if we compare them to vowel. Because when we talk about vowel, there is no definite interference. As we said, there is no obstruction. The speech organs do not obstruct the airflow and the airflow goes out freely. So it is hard to imagine what's going on. While in consonants, no, we can actually either, as I said, see it in the mirror or feel it. So the difference, the, the interferences we have, the interactions we have, the contacts we have between organs of speech uh, in consonants are easily described. So that we start with consonants because they are easier to describe compared to vowels. In vowels, which are produced with no interference of the speech organs of, uh, of the speech organs with the airflow, that's why it's it actually it's hard to, to, to imagine and describe. This is the second reason. Consonants are easier to describe compared to vowels. Why? Because in consonants we have definite interference of the speech organs with the airflow. Now there is another reason, which is, as I said uh, uh, early uh, uh, in, in our course, that we have accents of English. Uh, as we have accents of Arabic, we have, for example, Baghdadi Arabic, Syrian Arabic, Jordanian Arabic, Egyptian Arabic. We have accents of English like General American, British English, Scottish English, Australian English, and so on. So in these accents of English, we have differences in vowels more than the differences we have in consonants. Consonants are produced in almost the same way in these accents of English. So we have more variations in vowels compared to the variations we have in consonants. So it is easier to start with the, with the sounds that don't have much variation, that are similar in, 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 in all accents of English. So again, it is easier to start with vowels, sorry, with consonants, because they contribute more to meaning or to understanding English. They are made with definite interference, they, thus they are easy, easier to describe. Uh, they are, there are less differences in consonants than we have in vowels. That's for the, these three reasons we usually start with the description of consonants, not the description of vowels. Okay? Now, for the description of vowels, there should be criteria or standards. Ma'ayir. What are these criteria? For the description, sorry, not vowels, consonants. It's incorrect here. For the description of consonants, we have three criteria. The first one is called manner of articulation. Manner, which means how the sound is produced. How do we produce a certain sound? This is called manner. How? How do we produce the sound? The second criteria is place of articulation which means where the sound is produced. So manner is how, while a place is where the sound is produced. Where exactly in the vocal tract, okay? And the third criteria is voicing. Maybe this should be the easiest one because um, we are talking about voiced or voiceless sounds. And how can we check this? I've already taught you how to do it, you should put your fingers on your neck, on the place of the larynx, and you pronounce the sound. If you feel, feel any vibration, it means this is a voiced sound. If you don't feel any vibration, this should be a voiceless sound. So uh, um, 
any 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 pair of consonants should be different in one or more of these criteria okay so manner of articulation how the sound is produced place of articulation where the sound is produced voicing is the sound voiced with vibration or voiceless without vibration now we start with manner of articulation with how the sound is produced the first set of sounds we have based on manner of articulation is called friction sounds in arabic we call them aswat ihtikakiyah what do you mean by this let's take it step by step we have nine fricative sounds in english we call them fricative sounds or if you like fricatives without the word sounds okay so we have nine fricatives in english in all of these nine consonants what do we have we're talking about how don't forget we have two articulators which come into partial contact there is contact but this contact is not a complete one it's a partial one it means that these organs of speech or these two articulators are contact are sorry are in contact but not all of it not all of them not all of the bodies or the organs are in complete contact part of it is in, compl in, in co complete contact and the other is not we are going to see with examples how when the two uh, uh, articulators or the organs of speech are in partial contact a narrow opening is made a narrow opening is made from this narrow opening the air can go out but with friction with friction because the, narrow, the the opening is narrow the air cannot go out freely the air will go out okay but with difficulty with friction with friction okay um this is how to produce fricative sounds again two articulators they come into partial contact with each other they make a narrow opening for the air to go out but with friction the place where the narrow opening is made actually is different so why do we have different fricative sounds because the 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 narrow opening is made at different places the first uh sounds actually the first pair of fricatives this is the first pair which is f and v f and v these are consonants that are produced when the lower lip the lower lip is raised to be in partial contact with the upper front teeth making a narrow slit or a narrow outlet a narrow opening where the air can go out causing friction you can feel the friction when you pronounce the sound v v f v if you put a mirror in front of you and say f v you can clearly see that your lower lip is raised and becomes in contact with the upper front teeth that's why these two sounds are called labiodental labiodental okay so if you open your book on page uh 25 and have a look at uh the uh, figure uh so the figure 12 you can see that the lower lip is in contact with the upper front teeth still there is a, a possibility for the air to go out that uh, contact between the lower lip and the upper front teeth is not a complete one it is a partial one now both f and v are oral what do you mean by oral it means that the air goes out through the mouth why because the soft palate is raised and the nasal cavity is closed so when the soft palate is raised the nasal cavity is closed 
it means that the air will pass through the mouth. That's why we call them oral sounds. You can practically check if fa and va are oral sounds. Say fa and close your nose. I'm closing my nose now. Nothing happens. The sound is still there. I can continue on pronouncing it. So fa and va are oral sounds. The next uh, feature is that both fa and va are labiodental, as I said, because we have a contact between the lower lip and the upper front teeth. Okay? That's why it's called shafawi sunni. Shafawi sunni. Yani shafa was well as none. They are both involved in the pronunciation of, of these sounds. Fa and va. They are oral. They are labiodental. However, there are differences. Fa is voiceless. Fa is voiceless. You can check this. Put your fingers on your larynx and say Definitely, there is no vibration. There is no vibration in the vocal cords. And the sound is long. While va is voiced. How can we check this? There is, there is vibration. Again, put your fingers on your, on your neck and say, v, v, v. there is vibration. So the difference between fa and va is that fa is voiceless because there is no vibration in the vocal cords, while v is voiced because there is vibration in the vocal cords. Now, the second important difference between fa and va is that fa is strong. Why? Because it is voiceless. Put in your mind that voiceless sounds are stronger than voiced sounds. Okay? While va is what? Is weak. Because it is what? It is a voiced sound. Fa is strong. Wa, uh, sorry, va is weak. We have more friction in, 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 in fa. And we have less friction in, in va. This is actually related to the amount of breath we have. The more breath, the more friction. So with fa, there is more breath. With va, there is less friction and less breath. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, fa and va are different in terms of being voiceless and voiced. Fa is strong, va is weak. Uh, we have more, more friction and more breath in fa, less friction, less breath in va. These are the differences. Now, let's ask a question and we can respond to this question when uh, we meet uh, uh, in our lecture. Uh, do we have va and, and fa and va? in all positions. Actually, we are going to respond to this now. The other question will be left for, for, uh, for, for the meat. So both fa and va can be found in all positions, which means we can find them initially, and we can find them medially, and finally, okay? Examples, we have so many examples. Fast, before, beef, initial, Initial, medial, and final. Okay? With V, there is the V sound. Vet, this is initial. Kava, this is medial. And uh, we have five. This is final. So both sounds can be found in all positions. Initially, medially, and finally. Now the question is, the one I told you about a minute ago, uh, the one that we are going to discuss in the meet, do we have these two sounds in our language, in Arabic? Think of an answer and we are going to discuss it in the meet. Now, fa and ve in final position. I want you to pay attention to this. This is very important. As we said a minute ago, fa is a strong, long sound. Why? Because it is a voiceless sound. Because it is a voiceless sound, it is a strong and long one. So it causes the preceding sound to be shorter and weaker than usual. So in final position, when, when we have fa in final position, 
the preceding sound, the one that comes before the fa, will be shorter and weaker. Why? Because the fa is strong. So the surrounding sound will be weaker and shorter. The, the contrary is correct for V, which is weak and short, which is weak and short. So it causes the, the preceding sound to be longer and longer and stronger and stronger. Why? Because the V is weak. The V is weak. Okay? It is a contrastive relationship. F is strong, the preceding sound will be shorter and weaker. V is weak, the preceding sound will be longer and stronger. Let's take an example. Safe and save. In the word safe, which is transcribed like this, safe, safe, the vowel sound A, the one before the F, what will happen to this vowel? Because F is voiceless, strong and long, what will happen? The A becomes shorter and weaker. Why? Because F is a strong sound. So why it becomes shorter and weaker? Because of the effect of the strong long sound, F. The contrary is correct for save, save. In the word save, the A, the vowel or the diphthong A will be what? will be longer and stronger than usual. Why? Because it is going to be longer and stronger because of the effect of the preceding vowel, uh, sorry, the preceding sound, V, which is a weak one. So a strong sound makes the preceding sound shorter and weaker. A weak sound like V makes the preceding sound longer and stronger. Now, what will happen in the pair of words leaf and leave, leaf and leave? We are going to discuss this in the uh, uh, in the next lecture, inshallah. Thank you very much for listening.